Okay, um, great to be here. I was in the Prague event too. Um, it's a super great time. Um, USA events as well, so it's just awesome to be a piece of the um, It's been so much fun to see the talents get up here every time and meet all the grandfathers and all these fun events. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jared Cower. I'm the uh, technical product manager for the NVIDIA Grid software solution. Um, so started out uh, helping launch the solution as a solution architect, and then somehow got stuck into the product management team, um, and I've been working there for about a year or so. so um, Pretty exciting. A uh, little bit more involved in the in the uh, in the software direction of the different platform now. Also involved in our community program, similar to CTP and the experts. We have a video grid community advisors program that I'm involved with as well. Um, it's been pretty fun and exciting uh, to meet a lot of you in this room on a regular basis. So, um, what I'm presenting about today is kind of a state of the union. Um, we have over the last six months worked extremely hard on a couple of really big releases. And it's amazing, I've talked to actually a bunch of you here at the show, and it's pretty, pretty amazing that a lot of you don't realize what we got and what we've released uh, just over the last six months or so. Uh, and actually, this is from August. So from August to now, we've actually had two major releases um, that are adding quite a bunch of new features. So what I wanted to do is give you kind of a state of the union of where we're at. And then we have two additional speakers. Um, Eric in the back, you can raise your hand, and Emily in the back as well. So they're doing two additional sessions. One of the sessions is kind of a, how do I deploy this stuff? And we decided to mix it up. There's a lot of Citrix here, so we're actually showing how to deploy grid vGPU with uh, ESX and Horizon, kind of a one-on-one, -on -one, all the way through it, uh, which will be a great session. And then Eric's doing some stuff around the team that he runs with um, performance, performance engineering. So these guys are the guys that are benchmarking, testing, scalability, and he's going to talk about how he does that, um, the different tools that are used, things we've created, things we've used out in the industry. So definitely really good sessions. Those are both tomorrow. Uh, I encourage you to get to those as well. So kind of an overview. Um, what I want to do is just set the agenda of what we're going to talk about. So the first thing is, is I'm just going to talk about a, a vision change. Um, in the past, kind of maybe the newest is graphics virtualization, is what the video grid was. Um, that message is changing a little bit, and I'll talk about that. And that's changing also if you follow us in the, in the market, if you follow us in the stock market. Um, grid is not a uh, big have a heavy focus for NVIDIA, but what is? So I'm going to talk about that vision change that you'll see within the grid solution. Uh, and then we'll do a deep dive kind of into the different features since August to, to now of uh, the different things that are coming, the different things that are here, and what we're dealing with in that regard. Okay, so this is a statement you may have seen in the past. So it's graphic virtualization for any workload. NVIDIA grids GPU offers the right level of performance for any graphics use case. What you're going to see is this big kind of change. It's not about graphics virtualization anymore. It's about GPU virtualization. Does anybody know why that message might change? One person from NVIDIA does in the back. One person over here. Why do you think it's changed? You can run more than graphics workloads on a GPU. Exactly. And that's something that we're starting to see customers do. With the advent of artificial intelligence and machine learning and deep learning taking advantage of GPUs, we're seeing more and more of you guys and your customers wanting to virtualize additional workloads other than CAD, CAM, engineering, or just Windows 10. We're seeing a lot more customers wanting to run machine learning type workloads. And so now it's about virtualizing a GPU to enable that type of workload to be deployed as well which is a really interesting space. Find one of us three, and we can tell you some amazing stories about how this space is evolving. Uh, you know, when I joined NVIDIA, just do a search on what the stock price was, you know, five and a half, six years ago compared to where it is today. I believe it was something like $12 a share when I joined, and I think we closed yesterday or somewhere around 215. Uh, but it's completely changed the entire company, and it's all about this type of business, this machine learning, artificial intelligence type stuff. But that's the market that we uh, are really spearheading. And so now we're starting to see a lot more of this. But expect more of this to happen. Expect more of your customers to want to run databases that are derived from GPUs. Literally databases that run in GPU frame buffer is a huge use case that we're seeing a lot of. Um, it's quite remarkable. So let's dive into this fall release. So this fall release, in my opinion, was the biggest release we've ever had. Um, added a whole bunch of new features, a whole bunch of new support, 
Um, we previewed some really cool things at VMworld and at Citrix Synergy relating to motion, a feature that I think is important to a lot of you guys out there. Um, so that will make its way into some future releases, but it was a tech preview here. Question? Uh, August is technically summer. Summer, well. Fall. <laughs> Okay, so here's the main areas of focus for the releases. Um, hardware, so what new hardware do we have? Management, we're finding that just adding GPUs into a deployment is really not great without management functionalities and additional management features that you guys are looking for. And Control Up this morning kind of talked about uh, some of the features around the management that they're pulling into their tools. Um, we'll talk about the scheduler, which you guys may or may not have ever thought of. Um, and then we'll get into compute. This is more into that second vision statement where we're now enabling more capabilities within the virtual GPUs. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about kind of the big announcement uh, here last Friday around Nutanix. All right, so let's first dive into the hardware. We'll get through this pretty quick, but essentially what's happening nowadays is it some of you may have remembered we had K1, K2. Those were grid boards, right? It was a grid K1 and a grid K2. So moving forward, that was just not easy to manage that we'd have these different product lines. So this is where the software solution came into play. It now gives us the ability that if it's a Tesla product, our Tesla board, which is a board that's been around a long time for doing high performance computing and compute type workloads, we now are just enabling the grid functionality on all Tesla products. And when I say all, nowadays it's all. So any board that says Tesla with Pascal moving forward supports grid. So it makes it a lot easier to decide. If your customer currently is a Tesla customer, they can run grid on that if it's Pascal moving forward. So it makes it easier from a hardware to side. And this, this, this happened with 5.0. So with 5.0, Pascal boards moving forward will all support the grid solution. So obviously, we kind of double our performance every family of releases, and that's what's happened here. So increased scalability, uh, flexibility over the Maxwell. So you may have known about the M10, the M60, the M6, these new Pascal boards, and I'll show you some numbers on them. They're quite a bit uh, more improvement. Now, we did something weird with, um, weird, but hopefully it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, you can beat me up or whatever, but we actually have renamed the virtual workstation SKU. So there is no more virtual workstation software license anymore. It's actually now essentially a Quadro virtual workstation product. And the reason being is, is now with Pascal, we can do Compute or CUDA, OpenCL on every profile. It now deserves a Quadro badge. So if you guys have customers that are running CAD CAM with Quadro cards in their physical workstations, we're now kind of correlating a physical Quadro to a virtual Quadro. So now these all pick up the Quadro badge and the Quadro branding. So our, our products that we're kind of famous for in the uh, enterprise space for enterprise workstation class graphics, the Quadro, now all of the virtual workstation products now are now essentially picked up a Quadro brand. So it's more of a branding change than anything, but it makes it easier for your customers. When your customers that are used to buying Quadro and maybe they do AutoCAD, now, if they were running Quadro on their workstation, they're going to want to run Quadro on the data center as well. So it picked up that name branding um, that kind of carries that through. Um, but that, that, that's a big change with Fibo. Um, with the Maxwell lineup, relating to bar size, if you're familiar with, with, with what that is, is how much memory can be addressed. We were limited with Maxwell to one terabyte of memory. And I've talked to a bunch of you. You guys are putting a lot more than one terabyte of system memory in hosts nowadays. And so we expanded that to 128 terabytes. I think we've got you guys covered now in regards to how much system memory can be supported with the Pascal lineup. And then some of you complained, Thomas, about the GPU mode switching, having to switch a GPU from graphics mode to compute mode because they shipped in compute mode. So the first task was always to flip it to graphics mode if you're going to run grid on. And if you were doing multiple customers that maybe had to run a compute workload at night, you had to flip it between every move. Now we don't have that with Pascal moving forward. So, so that's another thing that's been eliminated if you were one of those customers that had to deal with it. So let's um, kind of look at the lineup. So on the left is the uh, boards that maybe you knew before. So M60, M6, M10. The uh, M60 was kind of our performance optimized board. So this was a great board that customers used for kind of CAD CAM engineering, high-end use cases. 
M6 was blades, so if you had blades, that was your choice. And then the M10 was kind of density, so this was your knowledge user, task user type product solution. So these have not been the end of life, they still exist. So that means that you will see them around for at least another 12 to 18 months before they actually get end of life. But we've essentially added support for the entire Pascal lineup now. So now you've got a P40, which can kind of almost directly replace the, the M60. You've got a P6, which is the new Blade product. And I'll show a comparison of the versions here for you guys as well in a minute. Um, you've got an M10 that didn't get replaced. That's kind of the same, so there's not a P10 yet. And then you've got the P100 and the P4. That are the two new products that are all supported now. So the point being is, is that we're supporting a lot more boards. So um, the question that I always got from a lot of people is, why don't you just enable grid functionality on everything? Well, now you've got it as long as it's a Tesla product. As long as it's a Tesla data center product, now grid functionality is available on everything, which is nice. You don't have to really worry about that. Now, it does mean you may have to think about which card is the right card for my customer because you've got a lot more choices, but those are things that, uh, that we've got training and help around um, that we can help there. You kind of see the way that this uh, layout works. So here's the M60 compared to the P40, just from a performance perspective. So the M60 was, a, was essentially a, a dual GPU board, and you can see there it was 2,000 cores before, and now we're up to 3,800 in the P40. So a pretty big bump up, and then you see kind of the performance numbers. But essentially, it's about two times the performance of a, of, a, of an M60 here. And we can get uh, you know roughly from a user perspective, you know, a good amount of users on this board. Here's the blade optimized. So a pretty big jump, 1.8. And the OEMs are coming online pretty quick to support this. One of the nice things about this is, is that this Pascal series boards have been out for a long time. So they've been out for about eight months, nine months or so. So a lot of the OEMs are already supporting these in their servers. So it's not like we have to wait for them to get supported there. So we have two versions of the V100 at 16 and 12 gig. The 12 gig made its way into 5.1 release, which was just last Friday. And as new boards are released, we'll, our goal is to essentially have support with them almost day one. So there's kind of the hardware changes, those wards that are now in place. Um, let's jump into something that's actually really critical, I think, for deployments. Um, so this is our scheduler. So in the past, we always kind of bragged about our time-sliced scheduler. Uh, if you go one slide back, uh, what about Volta? So Volta will start making its way shortly. There's one Volta card released right now, which is the B100. This is kind of the card after P100 that a handful of CSPs have. So typically, there's a few customers and CSPs have that board. That's one that was really highly announced at Supercomputing. Um, that'll make its way into the 6.0 release. And that'll be supported. Good question. Somebody will give you a shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so schedulers. What schedulers are is we always talked about uh, as we take a GPU and we slice it up and we have a whole bunch of GPUs, virtual GPUs across that one, we always talked about how cool the time slicing scheduler was. It meant that every virtual GPU had full access to the GPU in its little slice of time. Uh, it meant that we've got this huge, powerful card that everybody gets their full slice of time. We realized over time that we needed other options. Um, We've got some really, really hoggy users out there. Some users that are really actively hitting the GPU hard. So what happens when that user takes up way too much of their share of the cycles? Well, until the job's finished, it doesn't move to the next user, and it can create what we call a noisy neighbor. So that noisy neighbor creates an issue for somebody else so that they actually have a bad experience because of that one jerk. So what we've done is we've actually created some new scheduler options with Pascal. So it gives you guys the ability now to ensure a level of support. Think of it, think of it as QoS for vGPU. So we've created a new method for this. But the way the old scheduler works, just to kind of show this, is over on the on the left hand side, we've got our round robin scheduler, right? This gives everybody that little slice of time. But we've got the top guy up here who's got four kind of tasks that have to be completed before it can move to the next guy, who's got three tasks before it can move to the next guy, who's got just one. But we can't move to VM3 until the first ones are done. 
So it's got to kind of go through those rows before it gets down to the other one again. It creates that noisy neighbor impact. So if a VM has no task, he still gets his little moment and it moves down. We can't guarantee levels of access or, or a level of, 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 of access to that GPU on a specific VM. They've got to go through that cycle to get to it. Um, and essentially what happens here is, is that we can get an uneven share of times. Now this is great in an enterprise deployment. Oftentimes because you've got users that aren't using the GPU all the time. And so this is something that I think will still be used pretty heavily and it, and it does enable for really great access. But what happens in a cloud? In a cloud or a service provider, I've got to guarantee my customer a level of, uh, a level of uh, GPU responsive, responsiveness. I've got to have a guarantee portion of that. And so what we've done with Pascal is we've created something that we're calling equal stair schedule. There's two variants to it. So we've got a relative vGPU mode and a relative pGPU mode. So essentially what this does is if I've got three VMs, I divide up all the cycles into, into one third and each user gets their exact slice. So in this case, the same exact scenario, four, three, one, um, I will skip those so that I can ensure one third direct access to that GPU for everybody. A new hardware feature was needed for this called preemption and that made its way into Pascal. And so there will be some features that are hardware specific moving forward, but for the most part, say for instance, the motion feature that maybe some of you saw at VMworld and, it, and it's Citrus Synergy, that's gonna go into Maxwell products, Pascal, and Ford. So a lot of those features will, but this is one that's very specific to Pascal uh, because of that hardware feature that was needed. But in this case, we've got uh, time slice for every VM, so we reserve those those cycles for each VM, and in a cloud provider type fashion, this is the exact type of thing that they would need uh, to be able to divide that up. So deterministic, think of it again as QoS. Now, we also have this relative PGPU mode, and in this case, I've got three VMs, but I slice it up four ways. Now I actually reserve that one fourth, so this is more of your cloud provider method where I reserve that one fourth for the additional machine to come in. In the previous example, if I had four and a user dropped off, it'll split and now divide it equally in three ways. So it kind of grows and shrinks depending upon how many users are on that, whereas this one is defined. It gives us that capability. So this can be turned on, turned off with Pascal. You can go back to the, the, to, to the round robin type schedule if you wanted to. Um, and I believe in, in Emily's session, she's gonna talk about how to configure this. So there's some options about how to configure this for your customers. Uh, but the big change uh, gives us a lot of additional capabilities for kind of configuration and fine tuning these environments to make sure everybody has what they need. All right, so just kind of a comparison here. We've got the time slice schedule on the picture. So deterministic uh, QoS capabilities aware of the original VPU that instigated a task, uh, noise neighbor impacts. Um, anybody remember what FRL is? This is LA, LA many people. So the FRL's frame rate limiter, we, we used to in our product limit the frame rate to like 30 frames per second. And the reason being is, is that the protocols typically can't go above that. So if the protocol can't deliver at 30 or 60 <laughs> frames per second, then we'll just pin it so that we don't waste GPU cycles rendering things that are unnecessary that the protocols themselves can't deliver. And those need to be adjusted. But now with Pascal, we don't have to limit it anymore. So there's no more limiting of the framework. Eric? Hey, Jared, I just want to mention I've got a couple customers that uh, ran with the Pascal boards and the new drivers, and they were seeing uh, quite low uh, frame rates. That was, even though the, um, the frame rate limiter doesn't actually, is not needed within the Pascal boards anymore. If you are reusing a VM that was previously using the Maxwell board and you just right, change the GPU on it, the frame rate limiter still applies. That's right, so, because the driver was installed before and it's a registry setting. So that's an important so thing to note. So if you do migrate a VM to Pascal, make sure you reinstall the driver or uninstall the driver, reinstall that because it sticks. Well, it's actually a, it's a, it's a parameter in the VMX file. So you just remove okay. it from the VMX file. So, and that's a VMware site. Yeah. But can it also the impact the potency and make it worse? Because of, it could. with the frame rate limits that you have it on, you actually increase the potency. So for the most part, we haven't seen that just because these cards are so much more powerful than the previous generation. Um, and now we're slicing those more equally, but you 
talk with Eric around performance testing that he's done. He can show you the exact things he's going to in his sessions, show you some of the benchmarks that we're seeing around that to where we're actually seeing a huge increase in the amount of frames rendered across the entire server host itself. Is there another? Oh, just a, I'm tired of hearing Jared and everybody else speak. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next uh, the next thing we'll talk about, something that's actually dear to my heart, because I've worked on with this team quite a bit, um, and this is management monitoring. Um, talking with a lot of you guys, the questions you come up to me and you ask is, what do I need GPU for? Uh, what app how do I know what applications are consuming the GPU? How do I know if a user's like consuming too much GPU? And what we concluded about a year and a half ago is that we needed a complete overhaul of how we are monitoring everything. And so that's the project that the engineering team and the product management team undertook. So over the last couple of releases, um, and with lots of discussions with guys like you, we concluded a few things for three different primary groups. If you're designing, assessing, piloting, it's critical that you understand what your customer is going to need. So if you're POC or piloting, uh, it's important to know what applications are actually using a GPU. So you can go to the customer and say, we need a GPU and here's why. And be able to show them that you've got these 15 applications that are consuming a GPU and here's how we're going to address that with this product. Uh, but we've got to be able to help provide you guys those tools to be able to assess that. Um, if you're in full-blown operations, how do you know if you don't have a whole bunch of your employees that are playing quick? or playing some game across your deployment, or, or playing some, doing something that they're not supposed to be, or streaming a whole bunch of videos that are chewing a bunch of GPU use, utilization. Um, we need to be able to provide that operational functionality, a monitoring of what's going on within your deployment. I mean, we can do it with storage, we can do it with CPU, we can do it with memory, and there's never been anything there around GPU to be able to determine exactly what a user's doing, and kind of throw those red flags of, you don't have enough GPU, or you need to get a bigger GPU, or you're totally over provisioned in your GPUs, you could actually double your user density around GPU. Uh, and then from support, again, how do you troubleshoot this stuff? It was just getting to a point where it was very difficult to handle. So what we did is we essentially created two levels of monitoring. So the first one's host, second one's guest. Within the host, we've been able to do some of this stuff, the guest is more kind of detailed. The first iterations of like K1, K2 monitoring, when you were monitoring the VM, you were monitoring the physical GPU in the host and every user saw the exact same utilization even though they weren't using that GPU, it was a mess. Um, so nowadays we can do a lot more than this, uh, very specific to the vGPU that we're monitoring. But you can see here, physical temperatures, uh, power utilization, everything that's related to the GPU, uh, GPU utilization, how many, what vGPUs can be deployed, how many of them are in use, um, everything from 3D engine utilization to encode, decode. And now with 5.0, we released application level monitoring. So when you saw with control up speaking to where they can see the different DLLs and which GPU utilization, frame up utilization, encode or decode, we now can get into all of those different functions um, within every VM across your deployment, which is huge. Um, with the right tools, like your control up type solutions, you now have the ability to monitor and tell exactly what application is consuming that amount of GPU kind of repeated across your organization. And same thing at the guest level. So we can do the application of the host and the guest all the way up and down. So this has been huge. Um, we partnered pretty well much with everybody. To get kind of an idea of what this looks like, you know, session monitoring help, uh, sizing, performance, um, but really it's visibility into everything now, which has just been uh, very well received, and not only well received by the customers, but by the different monitoring vendors. So this isn't just control up, we love control up, but it's also your lake sides and your liquid wares and your EG innovations. Um, all of these guys have been extremely receptive to implementing this within their solutions. So now all those solutions are gaining this GPU capability here. So if you look here, there's a couple ways you guys can use this type of stuff today. Um, if you don't want to buy a third-party tool, there's actually standard GPU and VM tools that are out there. If you're familiar with uh, NVWMI or NVML, these are our libraries that we install with the monitor or with the driver. You guys can pull those and grab the data yourself today. We actually have guys that are writing tools on um, <coughs> uh, Linux. So, 
Linux, there is there's monitoring within Linux, not quite as extensive at this point, but there is monitoring capabilities there too. But not with the ecosystem. Correct. And that's really we're providing that within the kind of driver framework, but those guys would have to have their plugins to pull the data out. So we do have some stuff that we put into the next slide I'll show you that we can do with Linux. That we we own that entire kind of puzzle. One of the challenges you're gonna have with monitoring is we develop the SDK, we develop the kind of hooks that are presenting the data, but we rely on a lot of the times third party people to write their tools, to have their 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 agent within the machines that then in turn can gather the data, record it to some type of historical components, and then assess it and present it to an end user. So we decided to go against the grain a little bit, and I'll tell you about it in a minute. Um, and, and we'll probably continue to do some of that, but not entirely. We really want to help enable an ecosystem, not be the ecosystem. We don't want to compete with the control of, we, and we also don't want to continue to develop an entire management monitoring tool. We'd rather develop the SDK. So a lot of your questions are a good point, but it really relies on those guys to create their agents. So you guys, though, can go grab the SDK. You can look at MVWMI and grab that data today. And people have, one of our solution architects, Jeremy Main, actually wrote a great tool called GP Profiler that you guys can go grab, download from GitHub, and it is awesome. Um, Thomas, you know some other guys that have written some cool tools as well um, that are all out there. Then we've got the ecosystem, um, and this is just mentions a few of them. I believe it's up to about 15 people that are now, 15 uh, uh, partners of ours that are now tapping into the, to the tools. And it's actually, the same tools are being used for our compute side of the business. So for machine learning, um, high performance computing, that NVML is a library that's actually used for that. And so there's partners and vendors in the monitoring space that are monitoring supercomputers that are also pulling some of this data now. So it's actually two avenues of NVIDIA is being able to take advantage of this monitoring stuff that a lot of you guys demanded that we have. So you guys should get a lot of project. Yep. Can you share who that is? Um, is that right computing? Or? Some of those guys are doing it, yeah. I can okay. share. I've got a list of them I can share. Also big list of guys that are doing. And the last one is the SDK. So the SDK is available, you guys can go grab it. Just like Jeremy Main and just like some other people have created their own little tools that they use, you can do this um, and write whatever you want with it, it's all open source. So here's the SDK, there's the link, if you want to go grab it, bake it into your tool. We can talk more about it offline over here. So this is that kind of answer to Thomas's question of what do we do? Um, obviously, as we work with different vendors, um, they are like, yeah, we create an open framework for anybody who wants to write plugins for vRoute to write a plugin. We're not going to do that. But if you guys want to, go for it. So we did. So what we have included with the solution is you can go download the vRoute um, solution. You download it when you download the driver. You deploy it as a solution and voila, now you have all this insight capabilities into your deployment around everything GP related down to application level. So it'll tell you what application is being most frequently used across your VMs. It'll tell you the temperature map of your GPUs and which ones are warm, which ones are cold, which ones are being used more. You can search by VM name or username, find out who's doing what, um, and use it as a troubleshooting tool. But if you have customers that are using VMware, VROPs, you can deploy this today, include it, no problem. When you download the Bible bits, it's just a, it's just a little package that you download and install. Um, really easy. If you're familiar with install the solution with the VROPs, you literally just install the solution and then give it your vCenter address, username, and password, and you're done. Now it starts gathering data. Yeah. Does it only work for the with GPUs? It does. So this is specific for to for which one? It'll work for NVIDIA GPUs. So it's going to be any of your Pascal, Tesla type lineup that's running the NVIDIA Grid VGP manager. So it's important that if you have like a Quadro card, which some customers have, that maybe they're passing through to a VM, that's not going to monitor those. This is going to monitor grid functionality. So it actually uses the NVIDIA Grid VGP manager on the ESX host to help pull the data and present that into VROPs. And then you now have got kind of the functionality. If anybody wants to see this, I've got this running, so you can come by and I can log in if it's important to you or your customer, and I can help you get some screenshots. I've also been, done some demos for customers if you want to see it. So I've had this running for uh, probably six months. Um, so I know this pretty well. But host view, GPU view, VGPU view, application view, 
And then there's different layers of kind of access you can give. So you can give like an admin or a help desk view to do different things. And you can create alerts and all the VROP type flags and actions all based off of this. So pretty cool solution. And again, it's just software, trying to add value with the software that we've migrated to here. So kind of a summary of the, of the monitoring stuff that we're going through. Um, you know, massive amounts of insight with the application level monitoring. You guys can literally tell what applications. The answer to your question that you always ask me is what apps consume GPUs? Well, now you can figure it out all by yourself. So you don't have to have any of that. You can tell exactly what users are having challenges. A uh, wide ecosystem of different OEMs. If you are working with a monitoring partner that's not uh, using or monitoring the GPU at this point in time, talk to me. I can work with them and get them the SDK and help them. Uh, we've got engineering teams that can help them get that stuff written into their code. So if you guys don't want to do this and you're just looking, go into your Perfbon or use NVIDIA SMI. Perfbon, you can pull the NVIDIA counters, all the data is available within Perfbon. You can do a remote Perfbon and grab all the data off of a machine if you're just looking for troubleshooting or help desk type stuff. All the data is there now. So pretty neat. All right, so the last thing is compute. I'll talk about this lightly, uh, just because it may not be 100% applicable to too much of what you guys are doing right now. But like I mentioned, NVIDIA is really big in this compute space, using GPUs for doing tasks that you wouldn't think of. Um, this high performance computing, this machine learning, um, AI creation. So now we are enabling this type of functionality. So what I did is I kind of created something here that shows you apps that do compute. Um, so now we've got kind of two tiers, if you will, of the product. You've got a virtual PC and this Quadro, Quadro uh, virtual workstation solution here. So the applications on the left-hand side there that are highlighting kind of that greenish color, those are apps that oftentimes were Quadro applications. These are apps that people that, uh, that deployed them, we have a huge market share with these applications that run Quadro. So now if those types of applications are what your customers are using, they kind of correlate directly. We could run these in the past, no problem, but it was one GPU to one user running that one app. And that's what's changed. What's changed with the Pascal is now we can run those apps on every profile. So now it gives us the ability to run uh, more users per server that are running these compute apps than in the past. So that's a big Pascal feature. Um, anything that's maybe just focusing around OpenGL or DirectX, the virtual PC products works for those, and of all the other apps, and it kind of correlates there. But understand that there's specific apps that take this CUDA stuff. Now it's no longer one-to-one. -one. Now we can do more than more than one-to-one -one on that. So here's kind of how this comes together. We've got the two software versions, PC, the virtual data center workstation. We got the monitoring stack, hypervisor. As you guys know we have you know the virtualization stack that runs on the hypervisor host. So this is gonna hypervisor is gonna be your you know. Oh, hey. no. oh. Damn. oh. Mac. <coughs> it's running a Windows project. I know that was it. I think it's Steve Jobs died. <laughs> all right, and that's all. All right, we get a couple more and we'll be good. Well, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay, to kind of pull this together, and is this going to crash again? Nope. Okay. So if it's compute, so this is workstation, high-end workstation apps. If it's rendering high-performance computing, you guys will start seeing this DL, ML type stuff. That's deep learning, machine learning. This is the thing that's driven NVIDIA's growth right now. As much as I would like to believe that it's the grid solution that's driving NVIDIA's growth, it's not. <laughs> it's the machine learning, the AI, the deep learning for this space here, which is huge. And it's making its way into even, even Citrix now as an AI company, apparently. Uh, and so there's all kinds of stuff here that's, this is the space that that would fall under. So, and that's that Quadro virtual data center product. That's so just kind of show this in a different light. 
Um, so, um, last Friday we had a 5.1 update. It did two things. Bug fixes, miscellaneous kind of maintenance releases. Um, it added the P, P100 12 gigabyte card, and the biggest thing it added was Acropolis support for eGPU. So we've been able to do Acropolis pass through support for quite some time, and a lot of customers have been taking advantage of that. Uh, but we worked really hard with those guys. A um, couple things to note about it. So grid 5.1, the driver's out there, it's ready to go, you can go download it today. Um, if you happen to be an early access partner to Acropolis 5.5. So that is a requirement, is you've got to have Acropolis or AHP 5.5 for the BGPU support within uh, AHP. But we're seeing a lot more AHP requests, and so we partnered really heavily with, with them, and now we're supporting the solution. So a couple things about the release that your customers might ask. First is M10 and M60 support on launch. So once this releases, it'll be M10, M60, P40 will come, um, but not initially. So just important to know. Um, Prism, from a UI perspective, has got graphical integration. You can drop down. You can see. You can report. It's kind of got some cool stuff. You can actually see like how many more vGPUs are available on a host. So how many more users I can put on that host. They've done a really good job with the integration there. And there's some good monitoring as well built into it. They've done a, they've done a pretty slick job at how this works. <laughs> So uh, simple grid BGP manager deployment. And what I mean by this is it's one script. They've done a really good job, similar to, where's Alex? Sweet, we're good. Similar to Zen <laughs> Server. Um, how Zen Server has got kind of a real simple uh, supplemental pack install for the BGP manager. You just browse to the ISO, you hit go, it deploys all your hosts and you're done. Um, they've done the same thing. So it's actually got um, a script you upload the file, you hit go on a script, and it deploys to every node in your entire cluster, every block in your cluster that's got a GPU in it so for updating. So they've got, they've got a, a, it says two, you're giving me more time than that, I love you. Okay, I'll give you the All right, now you took them back. And then it's got basic monitoring via Prism Element and a little bit more in Prism Central. So if you're familiar with Prism Element, Prism Element's a single kind of cluster node, Prism Central's multiple cluster nodes. Yes, Tom? So what what kind of skills will they be supporting? Is there something you can share? What type of what? Uh, which is the P4, P40, or the other? It's M10 and M60. Yeah. Can you share what they will be? I can. Talk to me afterwards. So they, <laughs> what they told us is that P40 will come. So they're working on that, but these two are supporting the P4. Before. So you'll have to talk to them. So it's hard when you guys ask me specific questions about like, it's not my baby. I mean, I can't answer exactly what they're going to do. They could do whatever, and then it also is dependent upon the server OEM. And as you guys know, Nutanix is hardware. It's like you got like two choices. So it's what those OEMs are going to do. You got two choices of like nine vendors. So it gets a little bit tricky, and that's that stuff that they're working on. We're working on. Okay, so here's what it looks like. If you kind of look at uh, this, is just a kind of a screenshot of adding a GPU or a VGPU to a VM. You've got you know, the ability now to select your license type, what profiles you're going to see, you select what you add, you pretty select what they've done. They've done a really good job. So again, a couple important notes. Acropolis 5.5 is required, which is not out yet. So, and you would have to ask them when it's going to be out. We've released our piece of it, so, and we have public permission to be able to speak to it. Here's a summary of everything in the uh, now summer fall, just so I don't get called out on that again. Um, kind of release of this, but uh, the Pascal support now, new guaranteed kind of QoS level within the scheduler for all of eGPUs, so you don't get that noisy neighbor. Uh, application layer monitoring, so we can monitor on what applications are consuming the most <coughs> GPU across your organization. Uh, now we can do compute on every virtual data center profile with Pascal. So now essentially every profile is the same. You don't have to do just one-to-one -one stuff anymore. Now we can do it on all of them, which gives us much better density. Um, Acropolis support was 5.5. We have, uh, as of this Pascal release, we have 32 vendors and 120 plus systems that support the Pascal hardware already. So we're definitely growing in our ecosystem of what we can support. Um, the Pascal stuff enables up to 24 GPUs per GPU now. So much better density than the 16 we kind of had in the past. Um, better performance, 
We have MV Inc. for Linux. If you're familiar with MV Inc. is, because that's very, very useful. Um, Eric's got some numbers he can show you around this that will prove how useful it is. But what we're doing with... Oh, she gave me two more minutes. To on that. So what MV Inc. is, is it's taking the HDX 3D, the Blast, RGS, these different protocols, and now they're calling the GPU to encode the protocol. So now it gives us the ability to free up CPU cycles um, and use that with the GPU to insult the, insult the protocol, which gives us better scalability, better overall <coughs> performance. And Eric, I hope you have some numbers around just showing the reduction in the overall input latency. There's some really great things that you guys should see around there in, uh, in that being able to kind of communicate with the VM in a much more fluid, um, fluid manner. Um, take a look at the your, got VROPS customers. Take a look at our, our integration. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, two things at the bottom I'll focus on, then I'll open up for like one minute of questions. First one is inter-branch driver compatibility. What the heck is that? That means you don't have to upgrade the vGPU manager and the host driver at the same time. So you can upgrade one and then make sure it's all good, then upgrade the other. But before you had to kind of do this like juggling game where you had to do like the vGPU manager and all your guests at the exact same time. So as long as it's 380x.x, and those numbers line up, you can do whatever you need to do. You can run 384.53 on the host, 387. whatever on the guest, and then upgrade those when it makes sense. So that's a big, big change. And the last one is, is we added high availability to the license server. So the licensing server now can be deployed in a high availability fashion. The most important one for you guys in here is remember that the license is now enforced. So if you're not using licenses, um, you will be, because you have to. Uh, they're now enforced. So you gotta make sure that you're being that is the K2 right card. Card. What's that? Is that on the K2 card? Uh, the, the K2 cards have the license baked into the actual card itself. We separated them when we went to the test log. Yes, Thomas. I got a very tricky question. I, I'm allowed to do it. Sure. sure. Stump the jump. <clears throat> so uh, I've seen uh, lately a lot of uh, search providers uh, be <laughs> downloading drivers from NVIDIA.com. Yeah. For VGPU, because they are available there, even though they have access to the portal. Mm -hmm. And why have NVIDIA put the drivers put there? Uh, so it's not the same driver. You got to be careful know, what it, it makes from a logical people that are not used to work with it. Yeah. They, so they, we they, can they, talk they, offline because I'm going to yell at in a minute and compliment, and I'm not going to make this woman angry. Throw it out. Um, but there is a logical answer. What they are doing is actually bad uh, because they're running a driver that's yet. The driver that they're downloading off of the natural NVIDIA website is a Tesla driver. It has limited WDDM functionality, and it actually won't perform as well as the, dri the driver that would be licensed in the portal. So it's a Tesla compute driver that they're using. And yes, some functionality will work, but it's going to be limited in the graphics functionality. So they can do it, and it may give them, like, it works a little, because the encoders are still there, so there's some things that are there. But it's not going to give them the full unlock potential of the card without being licensed. I have one last thing. <coughs> I've seen the uh, Thomas, now. come so, on. Just she's some mad. feedback from the field is I've seen the VGPU drivers can perform better than the, for, for Azure than the one that's on the video. You know? So you will have to talk about it offline. So you're saying the VGPU drivers performing better than the ones that are up. Yeah, that makes sense. Because the VGPU driver should be performing better. Yeah, but for Azure. For Azure. So that's because if they're running the P40, that's what we're trying to go into the P40 conversation. So the other thing, we'll have to talk about how that works. So there's some release cycles where the drivers for, for Azure, they have to update those on a specific time frame because we actually make some differences with the way the licensing works. And so they may be just running an older driver that doesn't fix that. But it does take offline. We'll talk offline. <laughs> Find Thomas. <laughs> 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 <laughs>